Hey guys, welcome to our video on watersheds and the water cycle. This is going to be our first video in a series of videos about rivers. And before I start, I want to quickly argue to you why it's worth spending a bunch of time learning about rivers. I think about rivers as something like the Earth's blood vessels, in the same way that our human blood vessels carry blood through our body that's essential for us to survive. Rivers are this network of channels that carry water across Earth's surface, which is also, of course, essential for us to survive. And rivers provide countless functions. They carry away our wastewaters. Many people don't realize that sewage treatment plants often discharge directly into rivers. That's where your waste goes. Simultaneously, many cities take their drinking water out of rivers. For example, uh, Los Angeles, San Diego, Phoenix. So rivers provide drinking water and of course also water for irrigation um, and the massive amount of agriculture that sustains our global population. Rivers are key habitats for aquatic ecosystems, fish and frogs and everything else. And rivers are great places to live. Um, they tend to shape our landscape, creating river valleys and floodplains, which make very attractive places to live. Many, much of our most arable farmland is on floodplains adjacent to rivers. Of course, many early villages and cities were built along rivers for transportation and for hydropower. So our kind of human geography is closely intertwined with, with the network of rivers. And of course, hand in hand with that human geography is the idea that human infrastructure can be destroyed by river flooding. Um, this is a problem that happens every year, most notably August 2017. As I'm recording this video, Houston, Texas is under many feet of water, sustaining billions of dollars of damage from huge floods. So I hope I've convinced you that rivers are really, really relevant to our lives and that they're worth learning about. And in this video, I want to introduce you to some of the basic concepts related to rivers. The first thing is, what is a watershed? Okay, that's the basic kind of organizational scheme of a river. Uh, what is the water cycle? How, do we, how does water get into rivers? And then the ideas of discharge and a hydrograph, how do we actually measure and quantify how much water is in a river? So let's start with the watershed. The watershed is defined as the entire land area upstream of some point on the river. And I always think of it this way. Imagine you're standing in the river right here and the water's rushing by your feet. The watershed is defined as every point of land that's upstream of you that could have contributed water into the river channel at that point. So if you're standing here at the mouth of this river, the watershed is every upstream point that would have had water flow off of it into the river channel and down past your feet, okay? Now in contrast, if you're on the if you're outside the watershed, say over here, you're actually in a different watershed because water is going to flow down this hill and into this, this neighboring watershed. And this boundary here, or the edge of the watersheds, is called a drainage divide. Typically that's a ridge line, where if water falls on one side, it goes into the adjacent watershed. If, if it falls on the other, it would go into the watershed of interest. Now, watersheds are a fairly straightforward concept. They're incredibly important for hydrologists and other folks who study water. They're this kind of natural uh, spatial unit um, that can be used to divide up the entire Earth's surface and think about it in terms of, of where water is coming from and where it's going. And this is incredibly relevant for pollution and of course also for water supply. If you, you have a certain amount of water that's falling into this watershed that may need to be budgeted out to different users and stakeholders. So what's an example of a watershed? Let's bring it back home. We're at Middlebury College in Middlebury, Vermont here. And uh, 
the Middlebury River uh, comes out of the mountains just to our east. And the Middlebury River watershed is essentially defined by these ridge lines here. And it flows out uh, this way through the town of Middlebury. And the drainage divide is at Middlebury Gap. You may not realize this, but when you drive past the snow bowl over Middlebury Gap, water on the east side flows down into the Connecticut River and out into Long Island Sound. Water on the west side flows down the Middlebury River into Lake Champlain and then out into the St. Lawrence River. So this is our own little watershed of interest, the Middlebury River. So now you know about a watershed, let's look at this idea of the water cycle. The water cycle is pretty straightforward. Essentially, water is evaporated out of oceans, mostly, and into water vapor and clouds. Those clouds then move over land and rain precipitation down onto the land surface. So this is where water comes from. Water in a river all originated as rain. Every last drop came in there as rain or snow. And what's important about this is that this is also an energy cycle. Essentially, the sun's energy is being used to evaporate that water up into water vapor. And then when the rain falls, that rain, that water, is now sitting at a high elevation. And by virtue of being at a high elevation, that water has some potential energy, okay? And that energy is gonna be converted into kinetic energy as the water flows out through these rivers. So this is something to never forget. Rivers are powerful. They, ha they are blessed with the energy of this water as it runs from the mountains down to the oceans, okay? And that energy, like everything, ultimately comes from the sun having driven that evaporation. A more recent example comes from Hurricane Irene uh, in August of 2011. This was a huge storm. It rained for a day on a Sunday afternoon, and it delivered roughly seven inches of rain along some of the crest of the Green Mountains here. Now, if you think about what seven inches of rain looks like, Imagine your bedroom covered in seven inches, half a foot of rain. And if you drain all that water off of your bedroom floor, that's a huge amount of water. So you multiply seven inches by the entire state of Vermont, huge amount of water that has to flow out of the rivers. And so let's take a quick look at what the Middlebury River actually looked like during a flood similar to Irene. This is just uh, upriver from the town of Ripton. Uh, Middlebury River way above its banks, eroding the road, flooding over the road. Thousands, millions of dollars of damage, and of course a hazard to the town of Ripton. So now you know how powerful the water cycle can be, let's finish the video by quantifying how much water is actually in a river. And this is a concept called discharge. Discharge is literally the rate of water flowing through a river channel at any given time. And it's given by uh, the cross-sectional area of the channel times the mean velocity. Essentially, you can think of this as if this is the cross-sectional area, this kind of plane cutting across the river, multiply that by how much, by how fast the water is flowing through that plane towards you. And that will give you an estimate of the discharge. And if we think about discharge over time, we can visualize that with what's called a hydrograph. This is a plot of time on the x-axis versus discharge on the y-axis. So here's the example of the hydrograph for Hurricane Irene along the Middlebury River. Mid to late August, we're flowing somewhere around 50 cubic feet per second. Then right as Irene hits, we skyrocket up to something like 17,000 cubic feet per second. 
literally the discharge gets 300 times higher as these floodwaters are filtered out through the river channel of course causing a lot of destruction along the way so in summary rivers are incredibly important and, re and relevant to our lives um, a watershed is a basic spatial unit it's defined as every upstream piece of land that could contribute water to some given downstream point in the river channel water and its potential energy are delivered by rain as part of the water cycle and we can measure how much runoff is happening by the unit of river discharge which is given by mean velocity multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the river channel and bringing this all together the key idea is that larger watersheds create more runoff and have higher discharges during floods thanks for listening and you should now be able to answer these two concept questions have a good day